Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So today we will see one more concept in compiler design that is input buffering. So in our previous session we have discussed about various phases of a compiler and how we have grouped them into passes and also we have seen a few compiler construction tools. And coming to the first phase that is a lexical analyzer and also we have seen the role of lexical analyzer which is the first phase of a compiler. So we know that a lexical analyzer which will take the program as an input or simply we can say a set of instructions as an input and it will produce a list of tokens. A list of tokens. And these tokens can be categorized as operators, okay, identifiers, keywords, special symbols, separators, etc, etc. So, this will be maintaining in a symbol table. In a symbol table. So, all these things we have discussed in our previous session, right? Lexim and token, corresponding token. So, all these things we have discussed in our previous sessions. Now, we will see how the instructions will be converted into this list of tokens. Okay. So, with the help of input buffering. Now, let us take uh, an example. So, int main Okay, so this is a, a small example. Let us take an example. So, like a is equal to uh, or simply go with the int a comma b a is equal to a plus b Okay, so this is a small program and now we need to identify the tokens. So first, we know that the complete program, so this we call it as a program. So where it will be saved, this will be in the secondary memory. Okay, in the secondary memory. So whatever the data we are storing, that will be stored in the secondary memory. So while execution, what happens? This secondary memory will be, the data from the secondary memory will be retrieved towards the main memory because the processor will execute only the information which is available in the main memory. So, in order to convert the program into tokens, it requires to read each and every character from the secondary memory. Right? So, it reads every character, every character from main memory ok so first the program will be copied into the main memory first the program will be copied into the main memory so from the main memory each and every character will be retrieved and that will be identified I mean if the control will identify the tokens the category of tokens Right. So, here let us check, for example, it is a memory, it is a memory, right. So, the complete information, let us take uh, this information up to here. So, I, N, T, space, space M, A, I, N, open parenthesis, closed parenthesis and again sorry, this is a cutting press, open cutting press, open cutting press. So, let us take this one. So, the complete information will be loaded into the main memory in this way. Each and every character will be read. So, here there will be two pointers. Two pointers. So, the first one is begin pointer begin point or we can also call it as a lexing begin point begin point okay lexing begin point and the another one is a forward point forward point okay so let us uh, assume it as lbp lexing begin pointer and the fp 
is a forward pointer. So initially, both lexeme begin pointer and the forward pointer will be pointing towards the same location. So for example, so this is a forward pointer and the position of lexeme begin pointer. So this is a position of lexeme begin pointer. So the lexeme begin pointer will remain same until it identifies the complete lexeme, one lexeme. Okay, and forward pointer will be keep on moving towards uh, the right side for every control to read each and every character. So initially it will read I and then this forward pointer will be moving forwards towards here. And again it will read N and again the forward pointer will be moving towards here. Again T and again it will be forwarded towards the next one. So here it is a space. So whenever the forward pointer points towards either, either space or any other special symbol which doesn't meet the requirement of lexeme, then it stops uh, forwarding, right? And whatever the characters read so far, that means int, it will be stored in a symbol table. It will be stored in a symbol table. So the lexeme, so this is a symbol table. So here it will be a lexeme and here it will be a token. So whatever the information read so far, int. So this will be treated as a keyword here. Keyword. And now whenever the forward pointer points towards the space or a special symbol, then immediately the le uh, lexeme begin pointer will be points towards the next one. So that means one lexeme has been completed. Now the begin pointer points towards the starting position of the next lexeme. Now again the forward pointer will be keep on going here. So this is a forward pointer. So then next M and afterwards the forward pointer will be incrementing one. So again it, it will be here M A and then that forward pointer will be moving towards here F P. So A I and again the forward pointer moves towards here and it is M. Again the forward pointer points towards here and you can see it is having a special symbol. So then again it stops. Now this main will be stored into the lexeme. And again the lexeme begin pointer will be pointing towards the next lexeme. So the next one is a parenthesis. Next the forward pointer will be moving towards the, this one. Forward step, right? Again there is a special symbol. Again the process stops and this will be moving towards the symbol table. It will check whether it is available in the symbol table or not. If it is available, then it will be ignored. Nothing will be happened. If it is not there, that will be stored in the symbol table. And again, the let's say begin pointer will be pointing towards here. LVP. So then next one is this one. Again, the forward pointer will be moving on this one. So again, it is a special symbol. So this will be again loaded into symbol table. So like this, each and every character of a program will be retrieved from the main memory. So because uh, in order to execute anything, the processor will execute only the data in the main memory. So that data should be loaded from the secondary memory to the main memory. So for this retrieval, it will be using some system calls. In order to retrieve the data, it will be using some system calls to read the data. So if our program is having some 100 characters, 100 characters, what happens? It requires some 100 system calls. It, it, it requires some 100 system calls. So it, it is somewhat a overhead problem. Okay, it, it, it have to, it will be focusing on more system calls, right? So time taking process also and overhead problem also. So in order to avoid that, so there is a concept called input buffering, buffering. So we'll use a buffer where a block of characters can be read in a single system call, using a single system call. So for example, so here in this case, in the current situation, every character was being read. 
right so how many number of characters are there that many system calls will be used to read the data now some buffer will be used the concept will be same the beginning pointer and the forward pointer the concept is same but instead of reading each and every character uh, continuously so it will take some block of memory so block of memory so which we call it as a buffer which we will call it as a buffer which can read a few characters at a time okay with using a single system call for example so let it be some six characters so first six characters will be read with a single system call and then it will be processed with the next one so these are the single six uh, characters for example i am saying so all these six, six characters has been retrieved with a single system call so previously it required some six, six system calls in order to read all the six characters so that doesn't happens here so here that is called the concept of input buffering so here the input is a program okay input is a program output will be the tokens different tokens so here we are reading the input from the program so in order to read the input we are using some buffers in order to convert the input towards the tokens we are using some buffers and here there are two types of buffers single buffer and two buffers so one buffer and two buffer so one buffer and another one is two buffer so as the name it indicates one buffer means it it uses only one buffer to read all the characters okay so here the problem is see if it is a one buffer so this is a one buffer i am explaining about a one buffer so that means only one buffer will be available For example, let us take these two statements. So I N T A comma B. Okay. So there is a problem. So what about the semicolon and then again the next statement? So immediately after completion of this buffer, the next colon will be here. So I will be replaced and semicolon will be placed. So overwriting will be done. there will be some sort of overwriting because if the input size is greater than the buffer size then obviously the the data inside the buffer will be overwritten okay so for example so buffer size is some 10 characters 10 characters and the input size is some 15 characters what happens so first 10 characters will there will be no problem so 11th character will be placed in the first position again so that means whatever the character available in the first position will re be replaced with the 11th character so some sort of data missing may be possible here and also there might be a chance of uh, having the complete token also for example let us take uh, the same thing uh, this one int main for example if you consider int main and we are taking here so int m a i okay so what about the n what about the n so n will be placed here n will be placed here but here so what happens the lexeme is incomplete m a i the lexeme is incomplete here so there might be some sort of inconsistency so for this problem we are moving on with the two buffers so in this two buffers in this two buffers so as the name itself indicates two different buffers will be available see two buffers will be available with a n size Uh, different sizes will be there so let it be buffer 1 and let it be buffer 2 okay so coming to these two situations so whenever the first statement so you go with here i n t space a comma b semicolon for example let us take one more okay let us take one more 
so what happens so whenever we want to stop reading so the end of the buffer will be placed here with the help of e o f so e o f is nothing but the end of file which represents the end of the buffer so whatever the characters read after the e o f immediately the buffer 2 will be start filling so same situation so here also there will be beginning pointer and the forward pointer so this will be keep on moving and whenever the forward pointer points towards this e o f immediately the forward pointer will be next pointing towards the starting position of the second buffer so this e o f is an end of file or also we can call it as sentinel characters so we will use that e o f in order to recognize the buffer is end okay the buffer is end so that we have to start filling in the second buffer so the control doesn't know about anything so we are we are only giving the some sort of sentinel character like e o f so whenever the file pointer moves towards the e o f immediately the file pointer will start filling the characters the next characters from the second buffer and here also it will start filling here so what is the next solution i mean next statement so a is equal to a plus b and this is a again n so we can go with the evof so whenever there is a evof again the file pointer will points towards the first position of the buffer one because buffer two has been completed right buffer two has been completed so if the file pointer points towards the end of file for the buffer one next pointer will be on the starting of the buffer two and if the file pointer points towards the end of the file of buffer 2 the next character should be read at the first position of buffer 1 so like this the characters will be read from the program so each and every character will be read uh, into a buffer okay with a single system call and from this the complete symbol table will be developed okay so it can it contains a different tokens of the program so input is a program and output will be the symbol table so where we will be getting all the tokens a list of tokens a list of tokens right so hope you understood so previously in the absence of buffer in order to read each and every character then if there are n characters in the program it requires a n system calls to read the data from the secondary memory to the main memory and in order to avoid that we are going with the buffers we are taking some buffer which is a block of memory where a group of characters can be read using only one system call so that that will be implemented with the two things one is a one buffer and a two buffer as the name indicates one buffer means only one buffer will be there and the two buffer means there will be two buffers and one will be having one sentinel character or an end of file so which represents the end of that particular buffer so that the file pointer will start filling the characters from the second buffer if the, if the file pointer points towards the end of the file of the second buffer it indicates the file point the, it, it is the end of the second buffer and the character should be read into the first buffer right so this is how a program can be sent to the lexical analyzer and by using this input buffering the complete symbol table will be developed where we can get all the tokens list of all the tokens right yes so let's stop here and if you are having any queries regarding this one feel free to post your doubts in the comment section definitely i will try to clarify all your doubts and if you really enjoyed my session like my session share my session with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel thanks for watching thank you very much